Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Um, you may notice that there is a poll on your screen. Um, if you can go ahead and give us your responses and then we will get started. And I'm going to go ahead and end the poll in just a few seconds. Good day, my name is Anissa Barton Thompson and I'm the social media specialist here at California State University, Dominguez Hills College of Extended and International Education. And I'll be your host for the presentation, so welcome. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be available on our website and social media shortly after today's presentation. Um, feel free to download the construction project management information kit from our chat panel in the right side of your screen. And if you are accessing this after our presentation, you can visit bit.ly slash CSUDH dash CMX dash info kit for the detailed information regarding our program. Now we've provided that link in the chat in today's session, but it'll also come to you in a follow-up email to the attendees, and it'll also be on our website. Now, before we get started, I want to go over the Zoom controls. Now, this is a, a recorded webinar format, so you won't need to worry about putting on your camera or turning on your microphone. However, we do want your participation today. So please help us address your needs. Let's use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen if you're joining us from the Zoom desktop app or from your mobile device or web browser, and you can use the top right of your screen if you're mobile device. Um, please ask your questions in that Q&A panel rather than in the chat panel. We wanna make sure that the chat is reserved for uh, commentary and additional notes and resources and helpful links. Now, once you click that Q&A button, a dialog box is going to open, allowing you to type in your question. Our marketing staff members, Stephanie Buchian and Keith Otterberg, as well as our program coordinator, Elizabeth Legg, are standing by to assist us with all of our questions. And we'll be able to answer those questions at the end of the session, although you may find that some of the questions you have will be answered during the presentation. Um, with that being said, let's take a quick look at our uh, agenda for today. We'll begin by meeting our certificate faculty who will introduce you to the program via an overview of benefits, expectations, and course details. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop that poll and share the results. So this is a little bit of feedback about what we have. And we'll make this available as well to our faculty who are very interested to hear what you have to say. Uh, speaking of the faculty, I'd like to turn this over to our presenter for today, uh, Mr. Jay Jefferson, our lead instructor for the program. Jay, go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Anisha, and good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We know your time is valuable, and we hope that uh, we provide some great information for you to help you make some career choices. And so, first of all, I'd like to start out by introducing our outstanding group of instructors from left to right, if you see on your screen, uh, David Stern, Larry Kaltman, uh, Jay Jefferson, myself, uh, Linda Newton, uh, uh, Austin Pell, and Michael Lalu. And so these are these individuals are um, eager to serve. And uh, I think if you add up all the time that we have combined, it's probably about 180 years of experience. So um, we're excited for the opportunity to work with you all, and we hope that you'll uh, be interested in joining the program uh, after you hear more about it. Okay, so let's talk about the industry outlook. All right, so uh, there's a lot of great things happening in the uh, out there right now. You know, the, there's a couple of stimulus packages out there. There's uh, uh, California budget is has a surplus. Who knew, right? That's amazing. And uh, construction is an essential service. So these are all good things. Of course, the vaccine is uh, rolling out. And, but uh, you know, there's some other things too, because we have the, uh, we're still sheltering in place. A lot of people are still getting sick, but this could be a great opportunity for you while we're sheltering in place to take our online classes uh, in order to enhance uh, your career efforts. So I'm going to talk about a key, a few key uh, building um, uh, indicators. So there's one thing that I like to look at. It's called the Architectural Building Index, 
And uh, this index is really a, um, it's uh, a survey that's taken by the uh, AIA, the Architects Institute of America, which they survey uh, designers. And, and so from that information, we glean uh, what's happening in design. And so it's kind of able, it's able to project what's going to happen in construction nine to 12 months from, from that point in time. And it's updated every three months. And so what's happening right now is design is a little slow, right? And part of the reason is, is because, you know, you know, we're, you know, dealing with the vaccine rolling out, you know, once the vaccine rolls out, people get back to work and you know then you'll see more projects going on. And so with that is still going back to my original statement an opportunity while we're sheltering in place to prepare yourself because even if you get a great opportunity out there it doesn't mean anything unless you're prepared. Now I'd like to ask David Stern who's a, got boots on the ground to tell you more about what he sees from his perspective. Hi Jay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. So this past year has been a very interesting time in construction. Um, I have crews in the field uh, actively working on construction projects. And uh, what has the COVID shutdown meant for us? Um, it's been restrictive, um, but it's also been some opportunities. Uh, construction in initially or right away was identified as an essential industry. And so even in the first weeks and months when people were ordered or suggested to stay home, um, construction was permitted to continue. In fact, I printed out the guideline from the county and highlighted the section that said construction is an essential industry so that uh, if, if my workers ran into any problem with that, they could show them that uh, they were permitted to be out and about. Working with the city has been uh, particularly interesting during this year. Um, many of the city's um, building departments are closed. The buildings are closed. Uh, West LA, where I do a good bit of work, they actually have a folding table out front of the building. And that's how you interact with the building department. However, um, I also did some work in an area that got hit by the civil unrest last summer and uh, they streamlined the permit process and uh, not only turned around a permit quickly, there was no charge for the permit. And when it came time for inspection, it was one shot. They came out at the end, um, signed it off, that was done. So a little harder to ramp up for it, but um, actually once the city was on board, it was a, uh, it was a, a pretty smooth uh, situation. So the cities, like with everything else, are getting more open. And as Jay said, when the vaccine hits more fully, uh, I think we'll see more of them open and uh, more fully cooperating with us. So back from the field, back to you, Jay. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. That's a great information. Now let's take a look at who should attend classes. All right, so who should attend? So construction personnel, contractors, architects, owners, developers, real estate people, building managers, you know, th there's a whole host of people, even people who are just interested in coming into the construction industry for the first time. You know, whether it's career advancement, promotion, or uh, just uh, another opportunity somewhere else, uh, these classes will help you do that because we are uh, a practical uh, course, uh, no theory involved. You're going to get what essential um, information you need to be a, a good uh, construction uh, person. And so let's talk about employment opportunities. So primarily, um, depending on your uh, degree or your background, Opportunities could range from, you know, like entry level, you would be uh, a project coordinator or a project engineer. Um, you would advance uh, at some point, of course, to an assistant project manager, a project manager, or even a superintendent. I, you know, I've had students who actually wanted to be a superintendent as well. And these are primarily with, you know, organizations as general contractors 
or subcontractors. You know, you should never discount the subcontracting community because there's 10 times as many subs as there are generals and, and subcontractors need project managers just as much as the generals do. And so, you know, wherever you are in your, um, in your career efforts, uh, the information that you glean from our class will help you um, regardless of, um, you know, what, what position you're in right now. So just keep those things in mind. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, program overview. So there's eight courses covering essential aspects of uh, construction project management. Your certificate is awarded upon completion of all courses. And it, you can be completed in as little as six months. And it's taught via online uh, with the learning management system and Zoom, a Blackboard learning management system and uh, Zoom web conferencing. Uh, the course sequence. Okay, so you need to take uh, CMX 903, which is uh, plan reading, before you take CMX 902, which is estimating. Those courses work in tandem. You've got to have the plan reading before you do the estimating. And uh, is, there's another strong recommendation that we make to you that you take plan reading, estimating, and bidding and scheduling, which is uh, 925, before you take field project management. And we'll get into more detail uh, later on about why you should do that and why that's important. All right, so um, let's talk about schedule. So this, the, the courses are live, they're synchronous, right? Versus asynchronous, which is independent study. So your instructors will meet you at the designated time on Zoom, primarily weeknights and Saturdays. Uh, typically the classes are, with some exceptions, of course, uh, three hour class weeks, uh, three hour classes per week, and uh, they're scheduled twice each calendar day. And, and so I would just wanna emphasize attendance and participation is very important. And so students should become come prepared to engage, right? I mean, you know, we don't want you just sitting there with your cameras off. You know, we can't mandate that your cameras be on, but it is important for your participation to, in order for you to succeed in the class. All right, so let's move to course overview. All right, so these are the eight courses that it takes for you to get a certificate. CMX 905, which is financing real estate acquisitions. CMX 904, construction accounting. CMX 903, plan reading, CMX 902, estimating, CMX 925, bidding and scheduling, CMX 921, real estate law for construction, CMX 926, construction safety, and CMX 920, which is field project management. So now I'm going to turn it over to David once again so he can tell us about his course. Thanks, Jay. So uh, I teach CMX 905, which is called Financing Real Estate Acquisitions. So I've been in the industry for over 30 years. Uh, I've been both a licensed uh, professional engineer, civil engineer, and also a licensed general contractor during that time. I started in the industry as an assistant superintendent. I worked my way from assistant superintendent to superintendent to project manager and then to owner of a contracting company. So in the class, by the way, the class is a one day class. It's a little different schedule than some of the others. It's a one day, six hour class. So it's three hour morning, three hour afternoon, then you're done. And there's no prerequisites. So you can take uh, my class in whatever uh, sequence you would prefer. Um, Talking about financing real estate acquisitions generally means finding out where the money is, finding out who's the, who the potential lenders are, whether they be banks or pension funds, or there's many other sources of, of uh, lending. And I try to emphasize the steps that a student should take or a professional in the field should take to actually access the money. And the most important aspect is something called the pro forma, which is essentially the financial model of a project. And so when you're talking to lenders, you're talking to investors, frankly, when you're talking to yourself uh, at night, <laughs> you wanna know 
how the project is going to go as a financial success. So the pro forma is definitely the most important step and we go very slowly and step by step on how to build a basic pro forma. But I branch out further from that and I also go into other pre-construction aspects. That is, what are the things you have to go through prior to launching a project? And in addition to pro forma and lenders, the other critical issue is what's called entitlements, which is getting the approvals of the public agencies. So we spend quite a bit of time on that. Uh, in general, I like to talk, think that my course is how to get from the concept of a project to the kickoff of a project, and which then leads into what many of my colleagues are going to cover. So hope you will join me. As I said, it's a one day course. Uh, in fact, there's one coming up in just a few weeks. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Michael, to tell you about his class. Thank you, David. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Lalu, and uh, I've, been I've been teaching for over uh, 10 years, and I've been in the construction management field for uh, over 25 years. Uh, in in the, the class that I teach, which is construction accounting, uh, it, the first thing that I do is uh, give the opportunities to the students to introduce themselves to the class. So that becomes like the beginning network uh, for, for all the students. So they, they tell about who they work for, job title and duty, and, and uh, why they're taking this class. So one of the sessions we cover the purpose of accounting. Uh, we, we go over accounting terminology and common documents used in accounting. Uh, we used uh, the completed contract and percentage complete, completion contract methods. Uh, we talk about uh, cost ledgers and general ledgers. Uh, we talk about job cost reporting and, and good business practices. Uh, in another session, we talk about uh, contract billings. Uh, we talk about lien rights and accounting for contract revenue and profits. We, we talk about personnel and payroll processing and reporting. Uh, we also discuss certified payroll, uh, controlling labor costs, subcontracting process, uh, the purchase order and its proper uh, process and use. <clears throat> and, and finally, at the end, we, uh, we cover accounting for equipment costs, uh, you know, renting versus uh, buying the options. Uh, and we, we include also accounting for overhead costs, uh, fraud and how to prevent it, uh, financial statements and the elements of litigation and application of uh, different technologies. So there is a lot of uh, uh, information that we cover and I, uh, I, you know, I like to engage all the students so everybody uh, will get the chance to share their experience with the rest of the class. And it's uh, usually very uh, rewarding to, uh, to, to my students. So I hope to see you soon and thank you. And I'll pass it to Larry. I teach plan reading and cost estimating. I've been in the construction industry for 60 plus years. I'm a registered architect, licensed general contractor and a California certified access specialist. I encourage and require participation in class discussions. And I certainly encourage you to be visible in the Zoom gallery so that uh, we can have uh, uh, a view of each other and, and understand uh, where we are uh, getting and not getting some of the information. And it, it helps me and it would help you. Uh, plan reading is like, a, like another language. Uh, there are many design disciplines that are involved in uh, creating the, the building plans, uh, civil engineering, structural, mechanical, electrical, landscape architect, interior design, and they all come to the, the table with different 
a, a different language and code regulations. The plans reflect the instructions from the architect and the engineers for building the building. Uh, as the various consulting disciplines are removed from the floor plan that should be uh, on your screen at the moment. Uh, the underlying architectural drawings are uncovered. And in looking at these plans, uh, <clears throat> the course touches on the meanings of lines, symbols, and schematics, dimensions, and how to understand them, how notes enhance the drawings, how all the speak all of this speaks that new language classes are taught employing bluebeam software excel drawings actual photos of the buildings and construction and 3d modeling to assist in understanding the uh, the building and the construction process uh, in cost estimating and i, I should note that both uh, plan reading and cost estimating classes are taught on Saturday mornings from 8.30 to 11.30. Uh, in the cost estimating class, we'll be using the plans from the plan reading class. Students will work in teams to create a cost estimate for, the build, for building that house and defining the scope of work for each of the contractors who will be on site to build a portion of the building is a key to being able to produce a competent quantity takeoff and an estimate of the cost of construction. Quantity takeoffs or surveys are vital to doing a cost estimate. Simple math and simple algebra, algebra are necessary uh, to be able to define the quantities of materials and labor required. And the class will exercise, absolutely exercise your math muscle. Again, we'll use drawings, photos, and 3D models to tease out the quantity takeoff. And at the last class, we'll look at all of the team estimates and discuss the successes, failures, and issues raised in the team's cost estimates. And then we'll compare their work with the actual cost of constructing that building. I look forward to seeing you, dialoguing with you, and sharing time with you in the plan reading and cost estimating classes. Now, here's Linda. Good morning, everybody. Um, I wanted to um, state that when I first started in 1989, I became an estimator project manager for Sully Miller, which is a heavy highway construction company. And when I started, I knew nothing about construction, equipment, bidding, anything. And I remember how overwhelming it was to get started. So I keep that in mind when I teach my class. Um, currently, bidding um, so many different types of bids in the industry um, in the Southern California area. We cover the major um, types of bids and um, go through them in detail starting from the beginning. Um, I really like to, we like to evaluate the risk and um, what's um, gonna be involved in bidding and submitting bids. I do some group exercises and have some guest speakers. And then the second half of the class, we go through scheduling and we start with basic scheduling, just putting things on a board, um, moving to, through Excel up to Microsoft projects. Um, in Microsoft projects, which is the critical path method scheduling software, we just get into it very little. Um, the college or the extended education does offer a uh, three week or four week project management class that starts in March. So if you really wanna learn Microsoft projects, I encourage you to take that class. But we go through just the basics in scheduling um, so that we understand um, how a schedule is put together and what impacts the schedule. And then the very last class, we um, do a group project and um, everybody presents it the last class and the class usually loves it. It's very informative and it shows what you've learned in the class. Uh, like Larry stated, I really would like to see everybody's faces and have everybody participate in the class. It really helps the whole entire class when everybody participates and asks questions. So I look forward to having you in my class. Um, I always enjoy all my students. And so next up is Austin. Um, 
Uh, thank you, Linda. Yes, my name's Austin. Uh, last name is Pell. I teach the CMX 921 Law for Construction uh, class. I've been a member of the state bar since California State Bar since 1997. Um, I'm also a member of half a dozen federal bar associations and licensed to practice, United States Tax Court, United States Patent and Trademark Office, United States uh, Ninth Circuit and Court of Appeals. And uh, I practiced construction and real estate law from 97 until about 2002. And since 2002, I've been employed in the construction industry as a construction manager, construction project inspector, structural steel inspector, um, construction professional, contract professional, and uh, sundry uh, job titles and roles uh, as a consultant. Now, my class is six sessions, three-hour sessions in the evenings. There are no homeworks, uh, there are no assignments, no quizzes and no exams, no required text. Uh, part of the reason is because uh, construction law is very difficult conceptually and you'll, you'll have enough on grasping uh, everything that's being taught to you in, my, in the three hours that you attend my class. Attendance is compulsory. Uh, to receive the grade, passing grade in this class, as in the other classes in this series. Uh, I also graduated from this program in 2013. So I am, I once sat where you are today, um, wondering whether to enroll or not. <laughs> and the class has been very good for me. It boosted my career. Uh, the certificate program uh, was a boost to my career. I hope it does the same for you. Here's my certificate from 2013. The first, uh, I'll take you through very quickly uh, the nuts and bolts of my class. Session number one, we learn about an overview of the judicial system and different methods of dispute resolution. Session two, uh, you're taught contract formation and defenses, remedies and damages for breach of contract. Session three, uh, bid law, construction contracts again, and breaches, breaches of contract. In more detail, session three is more detailed than session two, although some of the topics are repeated. Session four, uh, encompasses delay claims, differing site conditions, and changes to construction contracts. Session five, mechanics, liens, stop notices, releases, and bonds. Session six, contract estate license law, claim prevention, and good business practices. Uh, I tried to tailor, tailor, uh, excuse me, tailor my classes for everyone. So whether you work or are a contractor or work for or are an owner, and whether you practice uh, your trade in the uh, uh, public sector or private sector, I'm, I tailor the class so there's something in it for everyone. And thank you, and I look forward to seeing you. And now back to the illustrious Jay Jefferson. <laughs> Austin, you're too much. Uh, that was a great testimony, Austin. I, you know, that's, uh, you know, that just shows you how practical this uh, certificate is. I mean, Austin was a student and now he's an instructor. So that's, that's pretty amazing. Also, you've seen the diversity in the backgrounds and the experience of our instructors. And so I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, my background is primarily and uh, doing construction in higher education. And so I actually uh, worked in the CSU system uh, for 30 years managing construction projects. I've been retired about two years now. And uh, I actually, I actually um, managed construction projects at Dominguez Hills for about nine years. So the campus is, is near and dear to my heart. And um, so I've been teaching in the program for about 10 years. So now I want to tell you about 
um, CMX 926, which is uh, construction safety. And so you may know that we have a OSHA uh, program on campus. And sometimes I do get the question of, well, can I waive your construction safety class because I've had OSHA training? And so our class is not like the OSHA training that you receive. Our class is, is primarily uh, for project managers who need to understand the boots on the ground aspect of uh, safety in construction. And you know, so you won't get the same type of training you'll get in an OSHA program. And so the kind of things we focus on is, um, you know, we'll be talking about, you know, what, what happens when, if uh, OSHA comes to your site, like if you have a construction accident, OSHA is gonna come to your site, right? What do you do? How do you respond? as a project manager. Um, we'll also have industry experts come in and talk. And, um, you know, we will, once we get back out there, you know, when the vaccines are out and everything, we'll, we'll do actual uh, site tours. But right now we're doing virtual site tours. So, you know, when the industry experts come in, they'll talk about their construction sites and kind of safety things that they experience. Uh, we'll also talk about how to manage accidents and uh, we'll talk about elevated heights, uh, excavation and trenching. There'll also be uh, brief quizzes and um, there'll be a discussion board. So those are, those are some of the asynchronous, you know, we're talking about synchronous learning live, asynchronous is some independent things you'll do on your own. Like you'll take the quizzes on your own, you'll do a discussion board on your own. And so with that, I'd like to also now talk about my other class, which is um, construction project, uh, field project management, right? CMX 920. And so um, earlier you heard me talk about um, the prerequisites, right? Uh, it's important for you to take plan reading, estimating and bidding and scheduling before you take um, the field project management class. And I'm gonna go into some detail in a minute because we got a, I'm gonna talk about an RFP process that we're gonna be doing. But if you already have the background in plan reading, estimating and bidding and scheduling, then uh, you should be okay. Now, I just wanna take a quick survey because I wanna kind of get a feel for our art from our audience, kind of like, you know, what kind of experiences you have related to construction project delivery. I'm gonna be talking about in my class, different project delivery methods so I'm gonna see, okay, so the poll is up right now. So if you could just help us out by just telling us what type of project delivery methods have you been engaged in in the past? Design, bid, build, of course, is the traditional project management. I mean, I'm sorry, the con con traditional uh, construction project delivery method that the industry has been using forever. CM at risk, project, uh, progressive design, build, design, build, those are all more modern methods, um, task order construction. So let's hear from you, tell us what you've been doing. Uh, and then I'll talk about some of the things that I've been doing, all right? And some of the things that we'll be teaching in the class. All right, so Anissa, how are we coming with the survey? The survey is looking good. We have about one third of the attendees have replied. And we'll share the results shortly. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna leave the poll up and Jay, you can talk about the program benefits. Okay, all right. So um, so like I said, the, uh, traditional, um, sorry, I'm still working on my class. Oh, uh, so, sorry, go ahead. So CMX, CMX 920, right? So, um, you know, traditionally speaking, design, bid, build is all we had, you know? And so now we're into more modern delivery methods. And I've been working in some of these methods for about uh, 20 years now. And um, the reason why we have these modern delivery methods is to help us with, uh, you know, building collaboration, uh, partnerships, you know, building relationships. You know, construction has been an adversarial um, industry for many, many years, but now the industry is moving away from that because it's just not healthy, right? And we all, you know, we wanna have fun, we wanna enjoy our work, and it is possible in construction to enjoy your work, believe it or not. And 
So there's no finger pointing in these, in these more modern delivery methods. Everybody works together as a team. And that's, that's the most important thing that you'll get from you know, some of the things you're gonna learn about in our, um, in our class is, is working together as a team. And so we'll have uh, guest speakers, we'll have contractors coming in in that class as well. Um, we're gonna be talking about, uh, and you know, honestly, there's only so much we can teach you. I have a, my class is 10 weeks. It's probably one of the longest classes. And even, even in with that, there's only so much we can give you in that 10 weeks for three hours a week. But what we wanna give you is the basic understanding. And un, you know, when you go out there, when you go out on your job site and when you go out and interview and things like that, you understand the language. You, you understand what they're talking about. When you come out of our courses, you'll understand the lingo of construction. Like Larry said, plan reading, it's a world unto itself. And so that's basically what we're gonna help you be able to do. And so we're gonna talk about last planner system, um, which is a scheduling software. Uh, we're gonna do uh, project management software. Okay, so let's look at the poll real quick. So most people understand design, bid, build, at least half of you are, have some experience with design, bid, build, which is the most traditional way. Uh, no experience with CM at risk, no experience with progressive design, build, uh, design, build, okay, and task order construction. All right, that's awesome. So, you know, it's good to know these things, you know, like, so when you take my class, you'll be more educated on some of those other delivery methods. And so going back to uh, uh, 920, so we're gonna have brief quizzes and uh, you know, some of the asynchronous learning things where we have discussion board, but we're gonna also have the mock RFP project, right? And that's gonna be like the highlight of the course. And this is why you need some of those other courses in advance to taking uh, my course, because the RFP project is gonna be simulating a real world, um, students will come together uh, in teams, work together responding to an RFP, which I will give them, and then they will compete against each other, uh, you know, using, using some of those classes that they've learned, you know, planning, the scheduling, uh, the bidding, all those classes will be valuable in working together and responding to an RFP. And then you'll get points, uh, your your um, your projects will be uh, scored by industry experts, uh, just like in the real world, and you'll be interviewed, and um, you'll uh, you'll also be able to interact with those panelists as well. All right, so let's talk about uh, some of the program benefits. So um, as you heard us say earlier, we're going to have subject matter experts. You know, people that are going to come in and, and speak to you all. Uh, guest speakers, uh, you know, we'll have job postings. Um, you know, we get contractors come to us all the time asking us, do we have uh, qualified students who are coming out of the program that they can hire? So, um, you know, sometimes that information will go straight to the uh, program or it'll come to us as instructors uh, inquiring about students. And so that's another reason to be engaged and participate because if you want us to recommend you as a uh, potential employee, uh, you know, we're gonna have to get, get to know you a little bit and understand your work ethic and, and how you perform in class. Those are all helpful determinants in terms of us making a reference for you. Um, so the class, the course is real practical. Um, you know, it, it's boots on the ground. It's like when you come out of our program, you're gonna be able to go into the industry and do a direct application of what you've learned. Um, you know, and so we're going to also have a career day, which is going to be exciting. It's coming up uh, very soon. And uh, Stephanie is going to put some information about uh, how you can participate in, in career day. But essentially what's happening during career day is uh, we're going to have um, representatives from the construction industry come in, uh, in a virtual setting, of course and uh, current students and former students will have a chance to interact with um, those representatives and find out more about their companies and you know, what it takes to, to work for them and, and, and you know, what they're looking for uh, in an employee. And so uh, it's free of charge. There's, uh, the only thing that you have to do is RSVP 
And, um, you know, just check the link in the chat box and um, you can find out more information about that. And so with my final remarks, I just want to say um, thank you to Anisha and uh, Stephanie and Keith. Uh, they, they are the ones who are like the engine behind making these uh, webcasts work. And also thank you to uh, uh, Elizabeth Leigh. Uh, she's the program director and uh, her and her team are the engine behind making the whole program run. So we're, we're very grateful for the people that you don't necessarily see all the time, but they are the ones who make us look good. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Anissa. Anissa, take it away. All righty. Thank you so much, Jay, David, Michael, Larry, Linda, Austin, you guys did an amazing job. We're actually gonna come back to all of our instructors for our Q&A momentarily, but really quick, we wanna go over an overview of the, the, the nitty gritties of getting into these courses. So um, let's take a look at this information here. Um, our extended education programs are pretty much being offered extensively in an online format, which means that students are assigned online access through our campus IT services. Now, they're available through our student portal, which is called MyCSUDH. Um, this includes Blackboard, which is our learning management system, um, where all of the course content and materials are made available to the students. Our Gmail system, which is our, uh, it's called Toro Mail. Our Zoom web conferencing tool, of course. And the Zoom web conferencing tool and access for all of these are actually assigned by our registration office approximately two to three business days after the registration in your first course. So everyone has access right from the time, okay? Now, when it comes to enrolling, that enrollment uh, process is available through our Extended Education Registration Office, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you've taken a course with us here at Dominguez Hills in the past two years, you may register online using your mycsudh.edu account. Now we really, really, really recommend that you register early to make sure that there's space in the course, that you have enough time to get all of your materials and online access information, and that's all given to you uh, in a timely fashion. Payment is due at the time of registration. So you can pay for individual courses or you can register for multiple courses all at once. The federal WIOA, which is Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, provides funding through the California EDD Department for qualifying students who may be currently unemployed or seeking career training. For more information, you can email wioa at csudh.edu or visit our program uh, website for more information. If you need any additional financial assistance, please Google private student loan providers or connect with sallymay.com for student loan details. Now, again, we recommend that you register at least one week before the course begins and check your Toro mail and personal emails frequently for special instructions and campus notifications, especially in these times. You'll also wanna be sure to test your account access in Blackboard and get comfortable with the layout of your class such as where to find announcements, Zoom meeting schedules, discussions, and the like. Let us know via our academic technology services on our campus if you're having any technical difficulty connect. Now we get to the fun stuff. We're ready for our question and answer session. So I'm gonna ask all of our instructors to unmute yourselves and we're going to stop the screen share. And I'm gonna remind everybody in the attendees uh, to make sure that you um, are asking your question in the Q&A panel, and we'll bring that up. Let's see. All righty, so first question that we got was from an anonymous person who says, will this course be good for a business owner, for someone who's already um, actively engaged in some form of construction industry. How does this affect them? And I'll turn that question to Jay. Oh, okay. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, it's it's good if you are um, wanting, you know, if you're wanting to grow your business, right? 
um, you're going to need to know more about construction management. You know, we've had we have a variety of people that come into our program. Um, you know, we have like I had this one lady who was a, a developer, and um, she actually um, obviously she knew a lot about development, but she didn't know the ins and outs of construction management. And you know, like you've heard David say, uh, it's important to be able to when you, you, you know, when you have a project, you've got to be able to engage with the city, right? You've got to be able to engage with public agencies who are responsible for approving your project. You need to understand the ins and outs of the project team, who's involved with, um, you know, every aspect of, of the project experience. And so I think if you're a business owner and, and you're, you're wanting to grow your company, and especially if you're interested in getting into public works, uh, private works, residential is good. Public works is more um, uh, demanding in terms of, of, of comprehension and, and understanding the ins and outs. So I hope that answers the question. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you want to um, add something to this? Yes, please. Uh, so it, it definitely, you know, uh, if you're a business uh, owner, uh, this this certificate, this this classes will help you learn about the terminology uh, of construction management. So you can communicate with the different groups, you know, uh, with the uh, accountants, with the with the city officials for the permit, for uh, any any all the stakeholders. You can communicate easily with them. Uh, because after because after you have this certificate here, you will be very confident uh, the terminology used in construction management. Okay, back to you. Great, great. Okay, so um, Patricia asks, will we be getting any exposure using Primavera P six? Okay, I'll go ahead and that, answer that. That's a we question. We don't really get into P6, but we get into critical path method software through Microsoft projects, which is a very much easier program to use. Um, we get into it very little, but um, P6 is a critical path method software. So we go through the basics of um, how you determine the critical path, um, which ties into P6. So then eventually, if you do use P6, you'll understand the background of how the schedule is created and why the critical path is developed. Okay, excellent. Um, Larry, I think this question might be for you. I know you did a great job of uh, giving an overview of uh, how the, the drawings and the planning and, and working with all of those details work. Um, Casey wants to know, will we be using SketchUp uh, using um, that in any of your courses or any of the courses in general? I use SketchUp to show you models of buildings or details of buildings. Uh, I don't have SketchUp available for students. Uh, I can certainly uh, aid students who have SketchUp and need some assistance in understanding how to work with it. Uh, but we don't, uh, we don't provide SketchUp as a, uh, uh, a software that students use. Okay, thank you for that information. Um, Austin, I have a question for you. Uh, Lorenzo wants to know, um, he's currently employed in the construction business as a field worker and has been um, acquiring more responsibility with paperwork and assisting his project manager. Um, would this certificate um, under his belt increase his wage and positioning? How, how is that experience uh, of going through the program, how has that boosted uh, your own career experience? And can you give him a little bit of feedback about yours? Oh, um, so Anissa, uh, um, well, my personal experience, I was working as a consultant at the time I uh, received the um, certificate in construction project management, and uh, I was unemployed. Uh, so, of course, being unemployed, I had no, uh, I mean, being a consultant, I wasn't eligible for unemployment insurance, you know, payments or anything. I uh, scraped together the last few, um, uh, a few hundred dollars I, I had in the bank and enrolled uh, in uh, Larry Cartman's um, uh, plan reading class and, uh, and estimating. 
And I mentioned to, uh, I was working as a consultant. My primary sources of income were uh, Nolan Construction Services and uh, some other agents like that, um, um, Sandy Pringle Associates. And uh, uh, I was at an ACIA meeting, and uh, I, I mentioned to Chris Nolan that I was engaged in this program. And he uh, he started finding more uh, work for me and uh, and actually offered me five dollars an hour or more, which at the time was was greatly appreciated because more work and an extra salary because he liked the fact that I was uh, going beyond what my position required. I was working for him as quality control um, contract enforcement type position inspection. And he liked the fact that I was on my own initiative. I was learning uh, all about estimating and uh, scheduling and uh, accounting and real estate acquisitions and project management and et cetera. Because he, he valued, he wanted the, his agent, his um, uh, consultant to be well-rounded in the construction industry. And I found it, it made me a better, more effective in my role because I understood what motivated the other players on the chessboard, who they were being paid by, what their goals were, uh, as well as overall project delivery. So instead of looking, having a narrow, straight, uh, blinkered focus on my job, I had a better understanding, like I said, like I said, of what motivated the other players on the chessboard. And uh, and how to um, uh, um, be a better be a better consultant in my position, and to as uh, as Jay says, uh, be um, more accommodating of other people for the benefit of the whole uh, um, project. Instead of thinking of my little piece of the pie, the project as a whole. Because in construction, if a project is finished on time and under budget, everybody looks good. If it's delayed and goes over budget, no matter whose fault it is, it's egg on everybody's face. The mud splashes on everyone. So as Jay said, we're moving away from more of an adversarial uh, um, game or approach to more of uh, a um, collaborative approach to project delivery. So I'm not sure if I answered the question. Um, please, uh, 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 could you ask the, the person who fielded the question if that was an adequate answer, Anissa? Um, they can pop it in the chat. I think that did the trick. I think you did it just right. Oh, um, thank you. I'm going to ask uh, another question. Um, actually, we have quite a few questions. Uh, Nicole wants to know, will this program prepare you to become a certified construction manager, CCM? or at least prepare you to take the exam. And I'll have Jay lead off with that. Okay, this program will not help you prepare for the exam. I, um, I'm a member of CC, um, CMAA, which is the Construction Management Association. I was actually on the board of directors for a couple of years. And so this program doesn't help you do that. Uh, there are uh, ways that you can prepare for the exam. I mean, there, there's like, um, information that you can download online and things like that. This program will help you prepare for a construction management career. And so the program is not necessarily related to uh, the, the CCM uh, certificate that you would get, but it will definitely alongside the certificate help you advance your career opportunities. Excellent. And along those lines, uh, Luis, from, uh, oh, I'm not sure where he's from, but uh, he says, uh, how is this program different from uh, a program like UCLA or USC's uh, construction programs? And, and what benefits do we have above and beyond? Who wants to take that one? Uh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> okay. I'll handle that one. So I actually taught at the UCLA program previously and uh, it's not nearly as um, focused on uh, construction project management, and it's not specifically uh, set up to deliver uh, a certificate in a short period of time. 
this one, uh, I, I believe if you schedule carefully and are aggressive with it, you can get through this in less than a year. Um, so the UCLA pro uh, program is, is not set up in the same way. It's, Michael, it's, I think. Also costs a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Larry. No, no, David hit the last point. It costs a great deal more. I'd like to add to it. Um, what I find with the instructors we have here, we all have practical knowledge. So we're not teaching out of a textbook. I don't know much about UCLA or USC's, but I know for me personally, I, I teach based on my experience and what I know, give a lot of examples, um, hope that everybody learns from what we teach and don't learn the hard way like we had to learn. And I think that's what we have to offer. Excellent, excellent. Oh. I have, uh, Go ahead, Michael. you know, before in, in the, uh, I mean, in the past in my classes, you know, I always ask the students why they're taking, in, uh, they're taking this program. And a couple of students in the past, they mentioned to me that they did survey of all the, uh, the programs out there, including USCLA and USC. And they said that the, our program has uh, provided the best value uh, for the best value. So uh, in addition to more than 180 years, as Jay mentioned, of experience from uh, from uh, the instructors, uh, there's a, a lot of the cost is, is lower than uh, the cost of other programs. Thank you. Excellent. Um, we know that um, a lot of students are really just coming into this um, feeling like they don't have enough experience to actually jump into the career. Um, when they're coming into this, what, what kind of takeaways, like direct takeaways are they coming out of your classes with? If anybody wants to jump in. I'm sorry, Nisa, can you repeat that please? Um, what kinds of direct takeaways? When they, when they leave your class, Larry, what are they leaving that class specifically with it they could take into a job interview or into uh, their their entry level position if they're just getting started. Well, as, as I mentioned in my remarks, uh, plan reading is, is a language. If you don't know the language, you can't work in, in the construction industry. Uh, and I, and I, I should add that uh, in, in all the years that I've been active in the business, I still learn something new every day. So it's not a question that you're gonna walk out of our classes with an absolute uh, ability to uh, function at the highest level, but you're gonna walk out with more information than you had when you walked in, and you're going to be able to use that information. You'll be able to assimilate plans and cost estimating and bidding and scheduling and put all those pieces together and be able to uh, speak with a an interviewer with some understandable knowledge that uh, they're going to see uh, that you have, and and uh, it'll give you a leg up in the uh, the interview process, and then certainly in the uh, uh, the performance of a job. Okay, and if someone's coming in with. Um, uh, quite a bit of experience. Is the program tailored to all levels of experience or what, who's best suited for this? In you know, I, I think honest, sorry, go Michael, ahead, you wanna go ahead? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, um, I, I think honestly, the, the program is uh, beneficial to any level of experience, whether you have experience or not. I mean, we have students that come in, probably about 50% of our students have little or no construction experience. And so they come in just wanting to, you know, like we said earlier, make a career change. Uh, you know, like we also, like we said earlier, construction is an essential service. So construction will continue, you know, regardless of uh, the environment we're, we're in. And, you know, there's a labor shortage out there too. So uh, the construction industry, you know, like baby boomers like myself and others are, are retiring three on a mule, right? So we need that next generation to step up. And so they understand that they're gonna to have to train you. Uh, they're not expecting people to come in with tons of experience, but 
they are looking for people who have a basic foundation and understanding in construction. And so that's what we offer. We offer you uh, practical knowledge and experience from our own uh, experiences, as, as Linda would say. There, there's another element to it as well. Uh, uh, people with more experience, with more knowledge, always have something to learn from listening to a question that a, uh, a novice asks that would get them thinking about how, how would they answer that question? How would they deal with that issue? And in terms of my interaction with students, the more knowledgeable students uh, uh, can hear uh, uh, a 60 year professional uh, point of view that maybe they hadn't considered before. So th there's always something to learn. There's always something to deal with. Who gets more out of it? Probably the novice gets more out of taking the classes. But the, uh, the weathered uh, professional who's taking classes is going to get a great deal out of it as well. Okay. And a, a little more focused on those kinds of details. Um, some people want to know, is this more commercial construction, residential construction, or both? Um, and as a general contracting or construction management, um, what is the, the bend on these kinds of classes? My classes uh, typically deal with residential and uh, uh, development, land development. Uh, the, uh, I, I believe the other folks, uh, the other uh, instructors deal more with uh, uh, commercial and uh, institutional uh, projects Excellent. right wrong yeah, well, well, well the, the beauty of the beauty of our program is is that we have a diversity of backgrounds right and so we have some people that come from commercial side some people that come from residential side linda comes from a uh, highway heavy highway and civil uh you know and so you know um david is a um actually a, a, a contractor himself and so that's that's the thing, you know. We have so many different types of, uh, and so you get you get all of that. In other words, I guess the bottom line is you'll get all of that uh, in this program. And, and from from my point of view, and plan reading and estimating, the it's not. I don't feel it's as important to uh, be worried about whether we're concentrating on residential or commercial. There's a great deal of crossover from one type of project to the other. And if, yeah. if you learn how to deal with one, you'll certainly be in a better position to deal with the other when it comes your way. Absolutely. Okay. Well, at this point, we're, we're coming a few minutes over our time, but I wanted to thank each of our panelists for being here. You did an excellent job of uh, detailing and highlighting all of the beautiful benefits of the program. Um, I'm sure all of these students, they're, they've been chomping at the bits trying to, to get the registration materials right now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the screen to get the details for that. So thank you, everybody, for this. Um, at this point, we've covered a great deal of information regarding the programs. But just in case we missed anything, feel free to email us at learn at csudh.edu or call us during our business hours Monday through Friday. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 310-243-2075. And when you're ready to take your next steps to register, please call our registration office at 310-243-3741 and click on option one when you hear the music. And they are standing by ready to take your registrations. Um, but please also remember that if you've previously been a student here at Dominguez Hills, you can simply go to mycsudh.edu and use the portal to register for courses online. Um, we'd love to get your feedback on today's session. So please give us a little bit of information on the quality of the details that we provided here today by visiting bit.ly slash csudh dash webinar dash feedback. And we also have that link in the chat for those who are participating live. And we want to make sure that you stay connected with us. So we um, have provided the information for connecting with us via our website, through our social media, 
uh, Facebook and LinkedIn groups. Um, our instructors are very responsive and you can email them directly as well or email through our marketing uh, program. Again, learn at csudh.edu. And we want to thank everybody for coming to the session today. We'll stay in the session for a few minutes more to give everyone a chance to jot down last minute notes, download the CMX information kit from the chat panel, and the recording for this session will be shortly available on our website. And it's actually live on our Facebook as well. Um, when you're ready to leave, simply click the red leave button in the corner of your screen. Once again, we thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you. Stay safe. See you in class.